Hello everybody, welcome back to another How To Guide With Myself Simulation For The Nation. Today, we are going to be looking at a quite heavily requested guide from you folks out there. We're going to look into how you can adjust the key bindings and all of the controls, especially for steering wheel, joystick, or controller. Now, a lot of you out there are who play on PC don't use the mouse and keyboard there, and I can completely understand why. And we're going to have a look into what that looks like to actually adjust those to make them a bit more compatible with your own style of play and making it a little bit more comfortable for yourself there as well. So let's have a look into it. So when you're at the main menu here, it's very simple. You're going to come down to options. Once you're inside the general settings there, you do have four tabs on the left-hand side. We'll get to those very shortly, but we're going to stay in the general settings because we want to ensure if you have a wheel or a controller or a joystick, that you have that enabled in the input controls. And that is where you're going to come to this first setting here, game pads and steering wheels. You want to keep that enabled. When you start up FarmSim for the first time, it should already recognize and detect your wheel and joystick if they're in, engaged. So you should be good to go there. If you haven't done that already, do make sure you take the time to enable that. Maybe restart your game after doing that and come back to this setting. At this point, we're going to look into making sure if you have head or eye tracking there. I don't use that, but if you do have it, make sure that is enabled. Now, force feedback is something you really want to play around with and see how you get on. I've got mine set down to about 20 or 30%. Uh, 20 at the moment i can sometimes flick it back up to 30 as well just to see how that feels for me and how that looks in game and i think that's a great way to go uh we're going to leave it at 20 for now now the our inverted look we're going to leave as it is as well everything else as you come down here is all about the sound so we don't need to worry too much about that our next step though is to go down to our display settings just check through everything is looking okay there again a lot of that will be automatically detected based upon your uh graphics card and your graphical capabilities so we'll leave that as it is for now as well if you want more information about a graphics settings and display settings let me know in the comments and i can always do another video separately but now we're going to go to keyboard controls and this is where we need to focus all of our time this is has been revamped all uh all over really for fs22 and giants have done a particularly good job of doing so and i say that because they've now categorized everything Every single key binding has a category and it's fantastic because if you're looking to adjust maybe how, for example, how you would look around inside a tractor and look around outside a tractor. So if you're trying to configure it to a joystick button or to a, one of the sticks on the control pad, you can actually find it very easily. So for example, here you'd be looking if it's when you're outside of a vehicle, you would be looking in this first section under player movement. But other times it's going to be when you're inside a vehicle. So you want to scroll down to vehicle driving. Uh, the same applies as you come down there if you want to adjust any of your uh, gearbox settings. We did a great video not so long ago on how to configure a manual gearbox. You can check that out as well uh, in the same playlist here. But you'll scroll right on down to the very bottom until you would find gearbox. And there you have it. There, vehicle gearbox. So they've made it very, very easy. And as you can see, as I look through this entire list, this is all for your keyboard and mouse. So your defaults, if you will. And again, if you have any particular preference on what buttons do what, and I certainly do, and I know many of us, uh, many of us out there do indeed, you can configure those as your heart would be content. All you would do, uh, if we look at lower uh, hydraulic cage, you click on it with your left mouse button. It'll pop up this window here, and that's when it's going to ask you what you want to change it to. So we're going to just keep it as N. Don't really use it on the keyboard anyway, but select N, and then it'll be done, and that's uh, completed. And then all you have to do after that is press Save Controls. Save successful, and we're done. That's a completely finished there. So it's very straightforward. But that is only the, the very tip of the iceberg, really. What we want to look into is how you can configure your controller, your joystick, perhaps, your steering wheel. If you have a gear shifter as well, you want to make sure that's all set up. To do that, you're going to come down to this little tab at the bottom. This is for gamepad. So we're going to press X, or you're going to click on it with your left mouse. And again, you have the exact same list of controls and inputs there but only this time you'll see for me here i have the g29 driving force race and wheel and i also have the logitech extreme 3d this here this whole list here is going to be for all of my logitech steering wheel configurations and this one here is going to be for all of my joystick the if you have a gear shifter as well that will be included inside the wheel as worth pointing out so again we want to make sure that everything is set now, what I do in mine on my gear, uh, on my joystick here, I use that for a couple of different features. You'll see it gets used for looking up and looking down. And also what I need to do here is add on look right and look left. 
I'm going to click there where it's empty. I'm going to grab my joystick. I'm going to use my the D-pad in question. And I'm just going to flick it to the right and then let go. And you can see it now says DP right. Same thing if I want to look left. I'm just going to gently grab it and flick it to the left. And that's it set. So now when I walk around, I can I can look up and down with my joystick there and we will be set there. Uh, moving down the list, you want to go through and you want to make sure that you have everything configured. So for example, my pedals, I've got my accelerator and my brake there all set. I know I'm good there. I've got my steering wheel adjusted as well. So it, it picks up the uh, the turning, which is fantastic. Uh, I've got my, my directional pad on my joystick set up for inside the vehicle as well. That's crucial to have that done. And as we see, we come down here. These are all little buttons that I've played around with over time. And I know that I wanted to have it set up. So from the muscle memory of FS19, it comes straight across into FS22. I don't have to even change a thing. And it works out brilliantly. A uh, few little exceptions this time around. There are some configurables I've put onto my joystick here. When you look at uh, inside the vehicle there, you can have the option to raise both hitches uh, at the same time there, or just raise and lower the front hitch or power on both implements on the front and on the rear if there are both on there. And I've put those onto my joystick or on the top buttons. If you ever watch me in a stream, you'll see that I use four buttons a lot around the top of the joystick with my thumb. I'm able just to toggle those very quickly there and that allows me to set everything up that I need. I find that very, very useful indeed and very convenient and very easy and ergonomic to function with. Uh, so that's what I always look into to make sure that that's going to set me up really well for the rest of the day. As we move on down the list, you'll see the rest of it is very similar, very straightforward configurables there. Some of these are all default. Some of them I don't really use too much at all. Most of them, if it's anything like changing the seed on a seed drill there or changing the bale size or interacting with any triggers, I will still use my keyboard for that. Uh, but again, it all comes down to individual preference. Uh, the one thing that you would want to look into, the one thing I do a lot of, is using my joystick for the front loader work. And I think that is something that's really important to get dialed in particularly uh, accurately. And I say that because my joystick, if I, if you, when you're com when you're combining your key configurations to do something like raising the loader, if you're slightly uh, leaning the joystick in a certain way, that will act as using that axis as well. So that will then take three different key combines uh, combinations. Or even if you just want to use one button and you slightly lean on the joystick, that'll make it to two. And when you get into game, you'll try and use the joystick and it won't work because it's recommending or it's expecting that secondary action. So to give you an example here, this is my front loader. This is how I use my front loader or my tie handler or my wheel loader in game with my joystick. I use the if the trigger uh, with my index finger, which is under the joystick. You imagine if you're flying a plane, that's the trigger you'd fire your weapon with. Uh, I use that and I have to, my front loader won't work unless that's pressed in. And then I use my directional pad on top of the joystick there to raise it up and down and to crowd the bucket or, uh, or empty the bucket. Now, if I'm not very, if I'm not very accurate and I set this up there, if I was to accidentally lean on the joystick and pull it left or right, as I'm pressing, uh, this key configuration in, it will add an additional step on there and it won't work. Uh, if you want to enter in a, a new combination like this, a button com combination for this action, all you would do is exactly like you would do in the procedure in game. So you'd hold the, the hold the trigger button down and then push in the action as well to, to log that control. So for example, for the top one here, I'm going to hold the trigger down with my directional little uh, novel on top of the joystick. I'm then just going to press down and that will completely control everything as you can see i've knocked in this instance here i knocked the joystick before i was able to record it and it's actually completely changed it so now it won't work it won't do as i'm expecting it to do there so we want to be able to change that so what we're going to do is uh go onto here we're going to raise this i want to push down on the trigger try and not to move it you can see it's very very gentle it doesn't take much of a maneuver at all so i use two hands to do this you're going to push the trigger in and you're going to press down as well. That's that's controlling the, the upwards action of the loader. Same thing applies for here. We want to press the trigger in. And this time we're going to go forward. And there we go. So that sets everything up as we need it to be. Uh, if you try and if you hold onto a joystick, for example, or even the control sticks on a controller, if you move one of those to the left, it automatically assumes that the... To, if Let's say if you are... If you're raising and lowering a front loader, 
if you use one of those control control sticks and move it down to the bottom and you want that to be the raising action because you're using the variable axis the game automatically believes that you want to use the opposite so raising the stick up to be the opposite action in game therefore lowering the loader and that's going to automatically plug that in so that's where you can get a little bit uh, messed up really and that's why you might find that this won't work but you've just got to take a little bit of time double check everything's right there and then even save it after every input you put in there so that you can just keep going through and changing all of these actions it should work very well uh, a few little troubleshooting steps though if you do find that for whatever reason you've gone through all those and it's not working for you you've gone into a game there you've jumped into your telehandler you open and uh, raise the uh, try to raise or lower the the boom and there's nothing's happening there's a strong chance that that's going to be because the same button or the same combination of buttons you've selected are also being used for a different action so what's happening there is the computer or your console cannot compute what you're trying to tell it to do it can't adjust it because it's trying to it's thinking it's needing to do two different actions with two buttons there so you'll need to run back through every single uh, combination in this file and make sure you haven't got that same combination in twice once you get that done you should be away to the races and after that really it's just a case of going through and toggling everything in there and making sure that it all makes sense if you're able to do that and you think you've got it nailed down you should be fantastic you should be a way to go uh, as you get more mods in here as you download different mods maybe different scripts different machines in there you may well find that they will come with their own option here Power Tools, for example, is a mod that allows you to change some configurable settings quite easily. This is a new tool menu that's coming in. I don't use gamepad controls for these, though. It's all done through the keyboard. So I come all the way down to the bottom, you'll see F12 is in there. And that's the way I like to keep it. For things like that, I don't need those controls on my steering wheel. Now, if you are using a wheel in Farming Simulator 22, you do want to make sure you have one final thing adjusted to your needs, and that is going to be the sensitivity of that wheel to find that out you're going to come down into the bottom tab here on the left and we're looking right now at the the axis dead zone so first thing you want to do is make sure you're looking at the right controller for me for example right now we're starting with my joystick here i don't really need to touch those they seem to work exactly how i need and to be honest i don't really use the x and y axis all that much so i don't really have any responsive needs there i'm going to switch device though down the bottom here to my wheel and this is where you want to be a little bit more careful with what that looks like uh these access dead zones are how responsive they are so to summarize for example if you turn your wheel to the left how far you have to turn your wheel before you feel or you see the wheel starting to turn and the vehicle starting to turn to the left as a default there they're going to start at 14 percent which is pretty large when you're turning your wheel you're gonna have a lot of an area where nothing is happening when you turn so you really want to counteract that typically i would say one or two percent is a great starting point it allows you to have a lot of resistance there uh, but it takes out any uh, possibility or any scope for any um uh any kind of phantom touches uh, that's always a good thing to have in there so two percent is what i use i think a two or three percent is really what a lot of uh of operators with wheels will use as well as you move down through the list there, the remaining axes will be for your pedals on the wheels, so you want to make sure that they are all set up properly as well. But really, that's just going to be a trial and effort. What you can do is you can adjust the number, you can come back out, go back into the game, have a play around, and see how you feel, and always go back in, in the game settings there, and adjust that a little bit more. That being said, uh, you can't do this inside a save game. You have to come out and go into the options here to do that, but you can still adjust it nonetheless. So I hope that does help. If you have any trouble, if you have any configurable issues that you, you can't quite seem to resolve, do let me know. Let me know in the comments or find me on uh, either my Instagram, Facebook or Discord. All links are in the description down below. If this kind of blog has been helpful, then do please hit that like button and subscribe for more from me, Simulation for the Nation. Till next time, though, I hope you're doing well. Do stay safe out there and we will see you all in the next one.